Hello and welcome to this special webinar titled Single Cell Sequencing, a new dimension in cancer diagnosis and treatment. Uh, I'm really excited about this one. I hope you are too. Uh, today we've got three fantastic presentations followed by a live Q&A. Our contributors today are Margarita Odenthal, head of the Laboratory of Translational Research at the Institute for Pathology at the University of Cologne. Nan Fang, CEO and co-founder of Singleron Biotechnologies and Toga Blackville, uh, R&D scientist at Singleron Biotechnologies. So before we begin, just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, questions, please feel free to ask questions as soon as you like using the area on the right hand side of your screen. You can also upvote other people's questions whenever you like as well. Uh, we should have plenty of time for Q&A at the end when we'll bring the speakers back on screen to answer your questions uh, on demand. So we won't be sharing the slides from today's webinar. However, you can access the whole webinar again on demand whenever you like within a minute of today's live session ending. Just use the same link that you used to get here today. Now, before we start, just so that our speakers have a better idea of who is in the audience today, we have a quick poll, the first of two polls today. So I'm just going to publish that poll right now. So if you can move over to the poll section, and you should see the poll has, has uh, appeared. The question is, uh, what are the most common bottlenecks you experience in your single cell sequencing experiment? Uh, so if everyone could just uh, take a minute just to submit a vote. Thank you very much. I can see that creeping up. To give everyone a little bit longer. This will really help the speakers today just understand who is in the audience and, and what have you. All right, just a few more seconds. I can see still creeping up. Thank you, everyone. All right, brilliant, brilliant. Thank you so much. We're going to make a start. Uh, so let's kick things off. I'd like to hand you over to Nan Fang, uh, co founder and CEO of Single Ron Biotechnologies, who's going to introduce uh, our first speaker in more detail. Over to you, Nan. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Richard. And thank you very much, everyone, for coming uh, to our webinar today. I, yeah, I just saw that uh, the poll results uh, shows that uh, some of you are quite new to the single cell uh, sequencing field, and I'm pretty sure you would like to know uh, how single cell sequencing can be used in clinics and uh, especially in cancer research and possible translation into clinics. And uh, that's actually how um, it got uh, me together uh, to Margarita uh, and how we started our collaboration. Uh, in 2019 on single cell, uh, using single cell sequencing to study uh, non-small cell lung cancer together with another great collaborator in China in the Shanghai uh, Pulmonary Hospital. And uh, when we started um, in 2019 uh, uh, with our project, it was actually quite uh, challenging uh, to do single cell sequencing with the biopsy from uh, needle biopsies uh, from uh, advanced uh, stage lung cancer patients. And uh, we developed methods together. We also run the, uh, this project together that uh, Margarita is going to uh, tell you about. And, um, and the, uh, yeah, the paper was actually just uh, published this month uh, in Nature Communications. And as to Margarita, she has been working uh, as the head of translational research group uh, at the Institute of uh, Pathology uh, in Cologne University Hospital for uh, quite some time. And uh, there she also established high throughput qPCR and NGS as routine clinical tests uh, in the pathology lab there. And uh, we are also very much looking forward to see uh, the single cell sequencing can also be turned in, uh, translated into clinics uh, in the near future. Okay, so uh, Margarita, the stage is yours. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Nan, uh, for this kind introduction. And um, so, um, because I'm I'm working in the translational molecular pathology. Um, I'm very much interested, of course, to um, to establish all, also single cell sequencing to um, to the diagnostics. 
So um, first of all, I would also like to thank uh, Frontline Genomics and Singleron to have here the opportunity to talk about our cooperative work on single cell sequencing, uh, which we did with the pulmonary oncology department in Shanghai and with uh, Singleron. Um, as Nan said, I'm heading the Laboratory of Translational Molecular Pathology and uh, the pathology is here in the center of various hospitals, as you see here with the red uh, arrow. And, uh, but it is not only centrally located in terms of space, but also in terms of its wide interaction with different clinics, which is essential in order to improve the tools in molecular pathology diagnostics, because a more individualized treatment is only possible when we have got very detailed diagnosis of the individual tumor disease. So, um, and uh, therefore, um, also different clinical partners and partners of translational research and of diagnostics have established a network for genomic medicine of lung cancer, which is now expanded to, um, to other lung cancer types and uh, also expanded to under, uh, other centers in, um, in uh, Germany. So uh, in this context, I was very happy that I was involved in a recent study initiated by our collaboration partners, uh, Dr. Xu and Dr. Wu from the Pulmonary Hospital Shanghai, focusing on single cell sequencing on biopsies of advanced non-small cell lung cancer. This study was conducted uh, using the Singleron platform, which is highly adapted to uh, diagnostic approaches. So um, I will give you in the next 20 minutes uh, some background information, but also um, I will talk about of, uh, our approach and of course about our results. Um, so due to the advances in treatment and diagnosis, lung cancer mortality rates have decreased by 54% uh, in men and also in for 30% in women in the last 30 years. However, lung cancer is still one of the most common cancers worldwide, has the highest incidence behind gender-specific cancers in both men and women, and the low survival rates for lung cancer reflect the large proportion of patients, about 60%, who are diagnosed with advanced and metastatic disease. And for them, the five-year survival rate is only 6%. This makes lung cancer the cancer with the highest mortality. And that is also true for China, here uh, represented by the red bars, indicating that lung cancer is the most common cancer after breast cancer, and also with the highest uh, mortality. So uh, among lung cancer, non-small cell lung cancer is the most common one, which is divided into large cell lung carcinoma, squamous cell lung carcinoma, and adenocarcinoma of the lung. And our study is now focused on the most frequent subtypes, lung adenocarcinoma and uh, squamous cell lung cancer which are both characterized by a certain um, a mutation profile. So, um, uh, over the last decade, many large-scale sequencing approaches have identified increasingly more tumor driver mutations, which have, um, on one hand, facilitated the development of target therapies, and they had also marked uh, benefits in uh, survival shown um, in comparison to the classical treatment approaches. But um, we have still um, a high mortality um, of lung cancer patients, and that is uh, mainly because um, the, uh, the lung cancer uh, is diagnosed um, when uh, we have already an advanced stage. And to this end, the activation of the immune system as a novel therapeutic option has long been investigated, and it has also um, uh, been uh, uh, much success. But uh, in the last years, when the checkpoint inhibition was discovered, 
um, there was really open up a, a new uh, perspective. So uh, what is uh, the checkpoint therapy? Um, here, uh, the immune checkpoint protein interaction, for example, uh, of PDL1 and PD1 interaction between cancer cells and T cells on one hand, or between dendritic cells and T cells on the other hand, result in a T cell repression. And immune therapeutic strategies by blocking these immune repressing checkpoint proteins have now transformed to the treatment of lung cancer, and they have uh, enormous uh, benefit. An increasing number of clinical trials are now all ongoing. There are monotherapeutic uh, trials or therapeutic uh, combinations. So, um, uh, however, uh, checkpoint inhibitors have uh, also they have achieved a substantial overall overall survival improvement, changing the five-year survival rate from uh, less of 5% to 29% around. However, not all patients can be treated successfully, and some patients do not respond after the second uh, therapy, for example. So um, there are still a lot of challenges uh, which we have to, um, to address. So um, the most uh, important ones are is a low response um, of um, uh, um, uh, of 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 the patients, uh, the lack of reliable predictive markers, and also um, that we need um, the other immuno therapeutic targets which we can use maybe for interfering with the immune system. And also the PDL um, expression, which we normally are using to uh, predict if the patient can respond to the therapy or tumor mutational burden, they are good markers, but uh, they are why not? Um, they are very imperfect, and we have still a lot of uh, patients who do not respond to the therapy, and um, we didn't maybe expect it. And to due to the complex um, cancer immune interactions among the tumor, the tumor environment and the host immunity, and also a detailed in the analysis of the immune components and interaction is really necessary to get predictive biomarkers for a personalized immune therapy. And gene expression analysis on single cell resolution by single cell RNA sequencing provides insights on gene expression pattern of each cell, thereby the intracellular, but also the intercellular signaling network. So, um, so several studies have deeply characterized the lung tumor microenvironment on, uh, at single cell resolution. For example, there was a comprehensive uh, study on stromal cells um, and showing the distinct pathways in um, the tumor uh, microenvironment. Also, another study showed that uh, infiltrating T cells um, were, um, which belong to the T uh, REC um, cluster, correlate with a poor prognosis. And uh, another study uh, showed also that endothelial cells are heterogeneous in um, both human and in mouse. However, all these reports focused on early resectable uh, lung cancers, which might not reflect the cellular profiles of advanced stages and that have undergone already um, some exhaustive uh, interactions of different cell types. And since most type patients get the diagnosis of lung cancer when they have already an advanced stage, um, and have already developed uh, metastasis, um, a study on advanced uh, lung cancer is very important. And these are very, very rare. So there is only um, uh, some, um, 
studies who have uh, only a few patients included uh, with uh, lung adenocarcinoma, and there is no study which included also uh, squamous lung cancer in an advanced uh, stage. So therefore, um, uh, we studied in uh, our Nature Communication paper um, uh, non-small cell lung cancer uh, patients with uh, adenocarcinoma and squamous cell uh, cancer. And we had included 42 uh, patients with diverse histology, uh, molecular phenotypes, different mutation status, and also a different histology. All tumors were stage three or stage four. And we worked also with biopsies because um, uh, advanced uh, lung cancer is not uh, any more resectable, and therefore it's uh, this material also so difficult to handle on one hand, one side, and also very rare. So um, uh, we used the workflow from Singleron, and um, that was uh, the reason that we used this because first um, we have here the possibility to put uh, the biopsies in a preservation uh, buffer. Uh, in this preservation buffer, the uh, samples are stable and cells are alive for uh, 72 hours. And um, there is also only one unique dissociation buffer, which is uh, also uh, very convenient when you use that because you can use it for all different tissue and even uh, when you are using tumor tissue or um, other tissue with a lot of fibrosis and a lot of uh, scaring um, proportions, uh, the buffer worked uh, very nice. So, uh, and the, n another reason was that <clears throat> the system and the, the workflow is a bit different than uh, other technologies. You have here, um, uh, 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 a microchip. Um, in this microchip, uh, only single cells um, are uh, placed. And um, uh, I think that's also mechanistic uh, forces are a bit lower as uh, in other microfluidic um, um, assays. Um, we had um, uh, quite good data that we had no doublet cells in, in, the, in the wells, and uh, so it worked very fine. Uh, another thing, uh, point is that uh, we can here separate 30,000 cells, uh, but the ship is also working very nicely when we have less, uh, as for example, when we are using uh, biopsies. So um, another uh, uh, reason was that um, Singleron is offering the whole workflow, not only uh, from uh, preservation, dissociation, um, uh, cell uh, um, uh, sequencing or RNA sequencing, it is also um, uh, offering the data analysis and uh, maybe Nan will here talk um, a bit more about this. Uh, I just want to mention that this uh, platform from Singleron is also including uh, clinical data, new markers, so it is also always ongoing, and that is, of course, very helpful. Also, of course, the pathologist wants to make their, the diagnosis uh, themselves, of course. Um, so, um, using this platform, um, we um, analyzed 90,000 uh, cells. Um, we got uh, 11 uh, cell types uh, and 48 uh, sub-cell types. And uh, the cell clusters, what we found, it was uh, quite similar to what other people also found in um, a similar um, uh, uh, approaches. Um, maybe what uh, is um, quite interesting that we also found cell types which are very rare, like follicle uh, dendritic, dendritic cells, and uh, that we are also showed that the, in the advanced stage the heterogeneity is quite high. So we had uh, some uh, patients with uh, very high. Um, 
T-cell, um, you know, I have to look if it's there, here it's no shown, um, T-cell uh, proportions and other uh, patients did have uh, less of that. So now I uh, would like to give you a, a little overview how uh, cancer is developed. Um, um, so we have different cell types in the lung which can develop into, uh, which can transform into a cancer cell. And um, here, this picture shows you um, uh, immunostaining of um, uh, mice, uh, lung adenocarcinoma, which are triggered by a Karas mutation. And um, uh, in the final stage, all carcinoma are 82 positive. These are alveolar uh, epithelial cells here from um, the bronchus um, uh, type 2. And they are um, shown by this uh, marker protein SPC. Uh, in the early stage, we have also uh, a double staining of uh, which is um, um, uh, specific for Clara cells or also called club uh, cells. Um, and uh, these markers are in club cells as well as also in the stem cell like cells of the bronchios. And uh, when you see here, these are, um, this is the bronchios, and you have here positive cells which are uh, quite. Uh, uh, which we, we think that these are these uh, Basque cells, these bronchioalveolar stem cells. So um, the um, squamous uh, cancer is uh, based on uh, development from basal uh, uh, cells, um, which are characterized by TP63 and uh, cytokeratines 5 and 6. And uh, when we now analyzed our epithelial cells and uh, 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 clustered them Hirashi, uh, according to the, the expression profiles in the different patients, and um, then uh, we could clearly show that uh, the um, uh, immunohistological marker are also a nicely separate um, squamous cell, uh, cell cancer and lung adenocarcinoma by the expression profiles of these markers. So that um, was also then shown here in comparison to immune histology. We have here the keratine 5 or the NAPSA uh, one, which is a marker for lung adenocarcinoma or the keratine for um, squamous cell cancer. And uh, this shows clearly that the subtype analysis of by a single cell RNA sequencing is really in agreement to the histolopathology. In the next um, approach, we uh, looked for copy number um, uh, alterations. And hereby we saw that some chromosomes are hit in both advanced squamous and also in lung adenocarcinoma. For example, chromosome 13, chromosome 10, or chromosome 18. When um, we then uh, look further for the differences, we show that lung adenocarcinoma um, with known driver mutations have additional amplification in chromosome 1, Q arm, and in chromosome 14. And in contrast, in lung squamous cancer, we found uh, insertions of chromosome 3 and a deletion in chromosome 5. So interesting, some of the lung adenocarcinoma patients um, without driver mutations have a similar pattern as the copy number variation profiles from uh, squamous lung cancer. In order now to, uh, to address the intratumoral heterogeneity, we clustered the cancer cells of the different samples. And here we uh, show that um, lung adenocarcinoma and lung uh, squamous um, uh, carcinoma uh, were mostly found in separate clusters. And also that lung adenocarcinoma are mostly uh, found in the, class, uh, in the cluster of uh, four. 
Um, cells of squamous uh, carcinoma are then in, in different uh, clusters, showing the higher uh, diversity uh, also here by the UMAP analysis. Yeah. So um, then we performed also a statistical analysis of the different proportions uh, of cells with uh, the same expression profiles. And also here we show that uh, we have a higher intratumor heterogeneity in, um, in uh, squamous uh, lung cancer than in lung adenocarcinoma. Further analysis of the um, cancer epithelial cells um, is here now shown for the 82 cells, the alveolar type 2 cells. Here we found two clusters. One cluster, 82 one, uh, is sh showing the expression profiles of healthy epithelial cells, whereas 82 epithelial cells show markers which are related to cell proliferation and cell migration, showing maybe, um, yeah, showing a more higher uh, malignant uh, phenotype. So, um, in order to go now more in detail, we performed also now um, pseudo pathway analysis. And I don't want to go uh, uh, all to this picture. It's also not in my experience, I have to say that, because that um, the, our bioinformatization um, uh, um, team performed. But what you see here when you are looking for the 82 cells, and uh, in comparison to the club cells, that um, that uh, uh, the, the uh, 82 cells and the club cells transited into lung adenocarcinoma independently, and also that we find um, sometimes in the final stage uh, uh, accumulation of the cells, which um, which uh, indicates that uh, we have here a terminal or a homogeneous terminal phenotype. So um, to go further on, on uh, the uh, tumor analysis, we uh, started to analyze the T cell uh, uh, populations. We found um, the most common T cell population um, um, uh, and we found two clusters of natural killer cells. In addition to, um, to the um, widely uh, found uh, T cells, we found also uh, T helper um, uh, uh, cell type 17 like um, uh, CD4 type. So um, what was all then also interesting that uh, we found in um, some part of um, the T cells, uh, also the expression of uh, other um, checkpoint um, pathway mediators uh, like the CTLA4 and the TIGIT, um, the TIGIT protein. And that was most uh, found in, um, in CD8 uh, exhausted uh, cell types. Uh, we analyzed also the B cells, but due to time, I will not go uh, to this, um, to these details. What was also very interesting were the neutrophil population. There were two neutrophil population, one uh, C is, uh, with the, uh, positive for the chemokine receptor 2, and uh, the other population for MMM12. So, but um, they, were, they had a really distinct uh, expression profile, as you see here in the violin blots. They have also other markers which are totally uh, positive or negative. And um, what was also interesting that uh, both of this population uh, expressed a LOX1, which is a, 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 a marker for peripheral um, 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 uh, cells um, infiltrating the tumor and uh, have uh, some suppressive um, activities. So the po polymorph nuclear myelid derived suppressor cells, uh, shortly called PMNMDSCS.
Um, the myelite, uh, in, for the myelite uh, cells, uh, we found um, uh, 10 different clusters, all ex um, characterized by a different um, uh, expression profile, mainly in the chemokines also. We found also two clusters for dendritic cells. And uh, when we look now in, um, in the cancer uh, cell types, how they are expressed and how they are uh, occurring, you can see that there are, uh, for some, um, uh, really um, dis um, significant uh, differences in between the different tumor types. Uh, that brought us then uh, to look uh, further on for the intercellular communication. Let's start with the neutrophils. You see here in this uh, blots the um, uh, expression profiles of different uh, chemokines uh, or the different uh, receptors. And you see also how cancer cells or uh, mature dendritic cells or peripheral dendritic cells uh, can interact uh, with uh, the different um, um, uh, uh, cell types and uh, clusters of expression. And what you what is very uh, interesting here that um, the cancer cells in lung adenocarcinoma that is shown in the first plot have a strong interaction uh, with uh, neutrophils um, that is. Uh, best seen in the mutated uh, lung adenocarcinoma, where it is not seen in squamous lung cancer. Looking for interaction and uh, cellular communication uh, of myeloid cells, here uh, you uh, see um, that um, cancer cells uh, have uh, a strong interaction with CD4. Uh, different CD4 and CD8 uh, cells. This is shown in the first blot where the, the circle is. Um, uh, but in squamous lung cancer, we have also a strong interaction uh, of macrophages um, with um, the uh, T cell uh, populations. So that brings us that also uh, macrophages are involved in the inhibition of T cell function through the checkpoint pathways. We didn't see any PD1, PDL1 um, axis, and that is uh, because it's hardly to find on the transcriptional level. So that uh, brings me now to the summary. Um, so we uh, could show that biopsy material is really um, um, uh, fine for uh, single cell sequencing. Um, uh, it worked uh, really very, very good. So, and we found uh, new um, uh, markers for uh, intertumoral uh, and intratumoral heterogeneity. Um, we could also highlight uh, follicular dendritic cells uh, and also Th17-like lymphocytes. Um, we showed that there is a high difference in um, lung uh, squamous cancer in comparison to lung adenocarcinoma. Um, the most important point what I want to make is this study showed us and we will really start at once to establish an infrastructure to make more single cell sequencing in patient material to find new markers and um, uh, for uh, individual therapy. And that is because um, when the and none will talk about this, how the single cell RNA sequencing method can be combined maybe with other um, analysis, then uh, we have all the uh, information which we have otherwise by other technology and uh, biopsy material is very um, low and therefore it's that is very, very interesting for us so that we will start with this. So um, I would like to thank you for your attention and um, I will like to answer your question later on. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Margarita, for this great uh, talk. And uh, as um, 
Richard at the beginning of the uh, webinar um, told us that all the we saw all the questions and we will leave them to the end and to answer them I'll, I'll try to answer all of them if we cannot um, then uh, we will contact you and make sure that you get an answer from us okay mm -hmm. um, yeah, so thank you very much, uh, Margarita. You can already reveal the questions. Looks like uh, people are quite excited about the work you just shared. And um, yeah, uh, since we are a little bit running um, over the time, um, I would um, try to uh, shorten my part of the talk to just give you a sneak uh, preview of uh, what we just launched as a focal scope product. And I would also very much uh, like to use this opportunity um, to, um, to officially launch our uh, single run European site. And um, just um, a brief overview of our company. Uh, single run was funded in 2018 uh, in China and currently in China, we uh, develop and produce our own products, uh, including instruments and microfluidic system, other reagents and software. And uh, we also have a, a accredited uh, clinical lab uh, in China doing uh, with our partners uh, clinical translations and clinical trials. And uh, altogether, we have more than 300 people now. But we now this year just opened um, our lab in Cologne, Germany. And we intend to use the lab as a demo plus a service lab to uh, make um, uh, pos possible partners in Europe uh, to get familiar with our technology and products. And uh, besides uh, our presence uh, in Europe and China, we also have uh, in the US a small uh, early technology development lab uh, next to Yale University. And um, this is uh, our team uh, in Germany. Uh, we really were, I'm very grateful that we were able to establish a very uh, talented uh, team uh, with people in the uh, uh, with experience in the field of single cell sequencing, uh, as well as uh, commercialization and uh, translation. And uh, one of the team member, uh, Tara, uh, will also give uh, you a presentation on our new product, uh, Dynascope, uh, later on. And uh, we are a little bit different uh, compared to some other single cell sequencing uh, companies because we have a very close um, focus, very sharp focus on clinical applications. Uh, so we designed and produced our products, um, our product port portfolios in such a way that we would uh, like to solve uh, clinical uh, bottlenecks uh, in a clinical single cell sequencing workflow. Uh, so we have already uh, um, served uh, more than 400 organizations um, uh, of customers in China and 80% of them are hospitals. And uh, we have already sequenced more than 50 uh, million single cells so far. And uh, as mentioned, we have a complete portfolio including instruments and uh, microfluidics chip and uh, other reagents for different applications of single cell and also software and the database. And I also saw some of you already uh, asked in the questions, uh, what would be the mutation profiles um, that we identified in our study? As um, what Margarita just showed was single cell RNA sequencing uh, results uh, from cancer samples, just like most available uh, technologies in the market. Uh, this can only look at RNA sequencing profiles. Uh, with limited information or no information on the uh, mutation profiles. And for those of you who are familiar with uh, cancer research, you know all the driver mutations, passenger mutations, and you would like probably like to know uh, how they work in different subclones um, of cancer. Uh, so here we actually just launched a product uh, recently that we call Focal Scope. 
uh, we design and customize our cell barcoding beads in such a way so that those beads not only have uh, poly D, uh, oligo DPs uh, for mRNA capture, they would also have um, custom designed probes so that we can use them to capture different uh, regions on the cDNA. Um, so with that, we are able to uh, detect together with mRNA profiles in each single cell also targeted regions. Uh, for example, we can detect uh, mutations uh, just as uh, what we have uh, in this lung cancer drug for mutation panel. And uh, we can also uh, use that to detect uh, intracellular uh, virus uh, because as you know, um, some virus like EBV virus uh, is very much present in specific types of uh, cancers and they might also have some direct um, relationship to the uh, generation and also progression of uh, those cancer types. So with the customer designed uh, beads of our focal scope product, we are also able to detect uh, those viral sequences together with the host mRNA sequ uh, sequences. And another possi uh, possible use of that is uh, to detect uh, some fusion uh, genes uh, in combination with the uh, host uh, mRNA profiles. Um, yeah, so if you would like to know more of uh, the uh, multi-omics focal scope products, uh, you are very welcome to contact us. And uh, besides uh, this uh, first in-market um, multi-omic single cell product focal scope, uh, we also just launched another uh, product that's called uh, Dinoscope, uh, where we put uh, uh, additional dimension of time to the single cell, already very high dimensional uh, single cell data. And uh, I would now uh, turn um, the stage uh, to power so that power would uh, be able to um, tell you more about the Dynascope product. Okay. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Nan. So it's my pleasure to introduce you uh, to Dynascope, which is our new product that can uh, measure um, nascent uh, single cell RNA sequencing. Um, yeah, so I started working this year uh, at Single One Biotechnology as an R&D scientist um, in Cologne. And uh, yeah, uh, today I will present you uh, Dynascope, a time-resolved single cell transcriptomic method to analyze transcription kinetics. So in conventional uh, single cell RNA sequencing, as we have seen today, and as uh, we know also from the literature, major uh, breakthroughs has been made and nowadays with the growing uh, community it's quite convenient to discover cellular heterogeneity to identify uh, cell clusters as you can see here for this example of the early mouse embryo data set um, and then annotate uh, the clusters um, and also it's quite straightforward to detect cell type specific markers um, but this conventional approach has also some limitation and one is that the uh, it's only a snapshot of a, t a particular time point. Um, so you don't know where the cells are coming from or where they are going. So um, uh, so you don't know uh, and may or maybe want to know uh, whether a certain transcript is freshly synthesized or outlasting. So uh, referring to the single cell data set that I showed you before from the mouse embryo, you might want to know whether the cell uh, was about to enter a certain uh, cell cluster. So whether the uh, uh, mRNA that uh, that ended the cell in, into this cluster is freshly synthesized, or whether it's already manifest in order to um, to um, to find out new things. So this uh, can be also visualized uh, by a um, ball of fruits. So where the uh, the single cell is a ball, and um, all the different fruits are different uh, mRNAs. And for instance, now it's easy to tell how. Uh, uh, what kind of fruits they are, and you can also count them. So, for instance, you could count um, the strawberries. But also, this image is only a snapshot. So you cannot tell which of the strawberries, for instance, uh, might be the tasty one or the freshest one, right? Um, so, in order to do this, you need to taste it. So, you need to take a bite. And also, that's the spirit of Dynascope. So, uh, what we are doing, or what we aim uh, to do with this method, is to um, uh, detect uh, the uh, freshness of the RNA. So therefore we are metabolically labeling the RNA in order to uh, tell uh, 
uh, whether the RNA has been uh, freshly transcribed or is uh, maintained uh, and is coming from before the treatment. So, um, and this method can be actually applied to, ac to all active and viable cell cultures and tissues, especially those that have been proven to be um, suitable for single cell RNA sequencing. So, and also you can add an additional layer um, to combine it with some treatment in order to find out uh, what the treatment, uh, how the treatment affects the transcriptome. So for instance, if you have a cell population as shown here to the left, uh, you can see how the red cells uh, will become after a treatment or like after an effect infection, um, after you add some drugs. If you are doing medical research uh, uh, in development, if you're interested in uh, signatures, or uh, if you are interested in transcriptional regulation on a single cell um, level. And uh, how does it work? So also in the past, there have been a different computational approach to tackle this problem. One uh, famous one is um, RNA velocity, where you uh, detect um, spliced and unspliced mRNA, and then uh, uh, you can distinguish freshly synthesized mRNA as those that have been unspliced. Um, or you build up uh, trajectory interference and order the cells in pseudo time in order to get an idea how one cell uh, state might uh, trans transit to another. But uh, Comparing to the fruit bowl, this is more like uh, as if you touch the fruit in order to get a first impression of how the fruit uh, might uh, taste like or how fresh it might be or how muddy it might be. So, um, um, but as I said, uh, with Dynascope, we want to get the real taste of um, uh, how fresh the mRNA is. So uh, uh, we are using a chemical approach where um, uridine is replaced uh, by an analogon called uh, 4 theouridine which is then incorporated only in freshly synthesized mRNA. And um, then later, this uh, incorporated 4 theouridine is chemically converted to a cytosine uh, analogon. And then uh, we have a, a uracil to cytosine conversion in reverse transcription, which enables us to discriminate between the nascent uh, transcript that uh, has been uh, synthesized after uh, we add the uh, fourth uridine and uh, all transcripts that, uh, that has been there for a while, which still have uracil. So integrated into the single one workflow that Margareta already shared with you, uh, we have some additional steps then. Uh, so first of all, we need to lay, uh, we need to treat the cells or dissociated tissues with the 4 theouridine uh, and then we can uh, dispurgate them into the single, uh, single one matrix, lyse the cells and add the uh, cell barcodes. Uh, so then we will have uh, transcripts showing here in red uh, that will have incorporated the 4 theouridine as they are freshly um, transcribed in the cell, and we will have a long-lived transcript showing in gray that still have the classical URC. And uh, this will be then chemically converted uh, into the cytosine analog, so uh, that in uh, red, uh, the nascent transcripts uh, will have a mismatch uh, after reverse transcription, while the stable transcript uh, that has um, uh, been already uh, there before, we added uh, fourth year, uh, for theouridine will not have any mismatch. And after that, uh, it's very simple. You just continue uh, normally with a single cell RNA sequencing uh, library as usually. Um, you can sequence uh, it then on the uh, Illumina platform and uh, afterwards um, using bioinformatical tools, you can separate uh, due to the mismatch uh, at the URC position, whether the transcript that you're looking at has been freshly synthesized or as a long-lived transcript. So uh, next, I will show you some benchmarking of this work. So here, for instance, uh, we have the substitution rate, which is crucial in order to detect uh, the freshly synthesized mRNA. And it um, uh, it's varies with uh, the duration of the labeling and the cell type. So here uh, I uh, show you two examples from uh, lung and bone marrow of a mouse. Mm. And as you can see here, the uracil to cytosine conversion is very specific in both cases, only to the uracil to cytosine uh, conversion and only upon treatment. So this enabling um, us only to detect freshly synthesized mRNA. Uh, so 
Then to dive a little bit more into these examples, here's also the same example from the bone marrow. So in the middle, you can see the cell type annotation uh, so of each cluster. And on the left, you can see um, the cells colored, uh, whether they have been treated or are left untreated with uh, four theoduradine. And as you can see on the treated versus untreated uh, humor plot, um, both cells, um, cluster together and uh, do uh, do not enter a separate cluster so uh, that the transcriptome is not changed and uh, that we have also a reliable transcriptome which is comparable to the untreated cells uh, when we treat the cells with 4 co uridine right. uh, and uh, this is also uh, then reflected on um, on the cell types showing on the right uh, so you have uh, similar uh, proportions of each uh, cell types. But of course, what is now more, uh, more important is to add this additional layer of um, um, of the uh, of the RNA uh, metabolism. So uh, here again, we have the example then from the lung. So in the middle is a cell type annotation. On the left, again, uh, the colors uh, indicating whether the cells have been treated or left untreated. And as you can see also in this example, the cells uh, end up in the same cluster as the untreated ones so that uh, we um, can assume that the transcript is uh, highly reliable uh, but then what is the most interesting part is uh, the plot on the right where we see the rna metabolism so here the cells are colored by the rna turnover rate which is uh, estimated by the uh, cytosine to uracil mismatch uh, divided by all transcripts so a freshly synthesized transcript uh, divided by all transcript and then you can see that actually for uh, different cell types like the b cells which are like in the top left corner, uh, the turnover rate is rather high, while for some other cell types like um, epithelia cells on the top right, it's it's rather low. So uh, also um, the mRNA turnover rates uh, differ between cells. So this can then also be summarized uh, in, a, in a violin plot. But what is probably most important is then uh, if you want to look at uh, your gene of interest. So here we have uh, just looked at the genes that are uh, enriched in uh, lung tissue only compared to other tissues and we already found three interesting groups by just looking at these few genes so here in this plot you see um, in red the freshly synthesized mrna and in gray always a uh, long-lived transcript that has not been fresh transcribed yet so uh, by looking at this highly enriched lung genes we already found that uh, so there are three groups so this freshly synthesized and stable um, mRNAs showing here in green, where in all uh, cell types, so B cells, endothelial cells, macrophage, there's freshly synthesized mRNA and there's old mRNA. Um, but then more interestingly, in the blue group, there's freshly synthesized uh, mRNA in B cells only. Um, and in the other cells, uh, there are some, uh, either it's not, uh, this gene is not expressed or it's only old, old transcript. And uh, lastly, in the red group, we can uh, we can identify only uh, old RNA. So in this uh, particular layer of information is always missing in uh, conventional single cell RNA sequencing data so that we can uh, add up with DNR scope. So um, what I just showed, uh, showed you is one application of DNR scope, which is the detection of nascent uh, RNA uh, levels and uh, or the RNA uh, synthesis rate, but also uh, one can imagine to monitor the degradation rate of RNA or to analyze uh, transcription dynamics and regulation after infection, drug treatments, developmental signals, uh, or transcription re regulation in general. So we think that Dynascope is the first commercial and high throughput through detection of nascent single cell RNA sequencing. And uh, if you want to try it out, uh, we offer a 20% discount of uh, any Di Dynascope products for uh, all attendees of uh, this webinar. And if you have further questions, I think we're happy to answer them now. And uh, you can also check our website or write us an email if you have some requests um, or uh, further questions. Thanks, uh, Tara. And uh, Richard, would you like to mention the uh, survey? That's uh, the second one. <laughs> Yeah, ab absolutely. Just in case anybody hasn't seen it, um, I posted a second survey just after yeah. the first talk. Um, 
which um, is, um, let me just get this right. Yeah, what are the most common sample types that you're working with? Um, quite a few of you have already answered that, which is fantastic. Thank you for spotting it and answering it. Uh, but if you haven't had the chance to do that, then if you could, if you could vote now, that would be great. Okay, yeah, then uh, we still have uh, about four to five minutes uh, for questions and I would uh, uh, pick some, is the imaging system built into uh, the same system? I was trying to understand how you look at uh, phenotype and genotype uh, in the same cell. Uh, this is a question from Andrew and uh, for our machine, uh, if that's what, what we are talking about, uh, our instrument to uh, partition single cells, we don't have an imaging system. Uh, so I, I think maybe that statement was a little bit uh, misleading. What I meant uh, by that is uh, what we could, could do is to really look at uh, the mutation or uh, other DNA-based um, uh, sequence uh, phenol, uh, genotypes and connect that to gene expression profiles in the same single cell. Uh, so sorry, our current uh, instrument doesn't have the imaging system uh, yet. And um, and then I also saw some other question. Uh, one is uh, from uh, Mohammad Mot uh, on Toro, and uh, I just have one question regarding the incorporation of uh, for SU. How would you control sufficient incorporation in dissociated tissues? Yeah, actually, that's a good question, I, and I think it depends on your uh, uh, also your research uh, question or your uh, approach, because maybe you are interested in something uh, that is uh, really early synthesized, uh, so upon treatment, let's say. So then uh, you also lower the uh, duration of uh, treating your cells with fourth uridine, but if uh, you are interested in more uh, um, in RNA that is maybe synthesized at the later stage. Um, uh, you could also prolong this treatment, but uh, for a starting point, we would always recommend um, maybe to use uh, uh, two hours as a treatment, and then we can also compare this to our existing data and see uh, and compare this incorporation rate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. And I also saw a question from Philip uh, Bishop. Have you tried to culture primary tissue short time? and perform uh, the dynascope analysis. Um, yeah, so maybe I can answer that. Um, we tried, uh, but in general, uh, from primary tissue, um, uh, we actually don't see um, a very efficient or complete incorporation as what we would see uh, if we could um, first dissociate the cells, but we are working on new uh, methods uh, to overcome this uh, challenge. And if you have any ideas I would like to discuss with us, uh, yeah, you are more than welcome. And, um, and then I saw another question um, on the target uh, sequence and focal scope uh, from Hui Qi. And uh, this is um, like, uh, 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 he or she is wondering whether uh, the compete, uh, whether the target uh, probe and the oligo DT would compete with each other, and how many targets uh, could we profile with uh, focal scope or focal sick? Actually, here uh, our uh, current um, design can uh, target up to five genes at different uh, regions, and uh, we did. Um, um, yeah, so the uh, possible computation is a concern. That's also why uh, currently we, um, so the maximum amount of genes, um, but at different regions that we can target is five. Uh, that way, that's what we would recommend. So that's a very good question. And um, I also think there might um, be some other questions. Oh, uh, looks like we are almost running over time. I still see a bunch of very, very good questions, uh, but um, please be assured that we would come back to you with um, all the answers. And uh, Richard, uh, it's now your turn. All right, well, look, thank you. Thank you very much to, to each of you. I thought that was a really fantastic webinar uh, and just based on a brilliant, brilliant case study 
Uh, for those of you that are interested, uh, much of the work presented in this webinar was recently published, and I've just dropped the citation into the comments um, mm. section, so, so please check that out uh, as well if, if you're interested. Uh, yeah, so th thank you to, to all of our speakers. Uh, thank you also to our partner for today's webinar, Single Run Biotechnologies. Uh, and thank you to all of you for, for, for joining us uh, today as well. Don't, don't forget this webinar is available uh, on demand, uh, so you can watch it back at, at any time at all. Uh, have a lovely day, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks.